Hello everybody. As you're watching this, if you're watching it on the day that it airs, it's Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Happy Mother's Day to my mom who is probably watching this before she goes and sees my youngest play uh, baseball. He's in a tournament down by Maslin uh, this weekend. So um, mom, love you. Thanks for all that you've done for me and continue to do for me and my family. I will start off this message. It's going to be a short one because in our service this weekend, we're actually going to dedicate uh, 10 children, 10 babies, toddlers to the Lord. So that's going to take up a lot of our, of our time. So this is a shorter message, but one that I try to return to every couple years because it was so important for me when I first had my, I guess you'd say, awakening to this. I don't know how I missed it, missed out on its importance. So um, shorter message today, but one I return to again and again because of its importance for uh, churches and for us as individuals as we try to follow Jesus. So uh, it's Mother's Day, so let's talk about the mother of all great inventions, Apple. Apple has a new product out I'm really excited about called the uh, AirTag. And the AirTag is, um, is supposedly going to help us to not lose things. So it's a little like button sticker thing that you put on just about anything. And this is important for me because I am a notorious forgetter of things and loser of things and so this little tag even in your house your phone will guide you through to wherever your lost item is that has been equipped with an air tag um, forgetfulness is a problem for me losing things is a problem for me I've lost my um, driver's license twice had to get a new driver's license issued at least twice lose my wallet quite a bit I wear a silicone um, Silicone wedding ring because I've lost my good one uh, twice for over six months at a time So now it stays safely in my wife's uh, jewelry box so I can pull it out for special occasions um, But go with silicone because I lose things. I'm always and I'll pull my phone out to text somebody and forget who um, I will be on the road and pass the street long time ago and realize where am I going? What am I doing? Um, grocery store I end up with a cart full of food and forget the thing that I went for. I also end up leaving my cart to go get, you know, back to the produce section. And then I forget where my cart is. And I'm also like, I'm that guy. I'm in the left lane. I'm in the fast lane with my blinker on going 58 miles an hour. It's not that I have like a medical problem that I know of anyway. I just, I'm a daydreamer and I lose sight of what I'm doing. I get lost in my thoughts and I have since I was since I was a little boy. So um, forgetfulness is a problem for me. And uh, that's important uh, for, because, because what I never want to forget are the things that Jesus says need to be at the center of our lives. There's a couple of teachings here that I want to look at where even Jesus' disciples, even the guys that ended up in the stained glass and writing scriptures, um, they forgot something extremely central to who Jesus was. And so I got a couple stories today um, to read to you from the Bible, a couple gospel readings uh, that, that emphasize keeping um, something so important to Jesus at the forefront of your life too. And a lot of times um, we forget this because the voice is quiet, because these... Um, are put in, in the category of to be seen and not heard. So I'm going to read this, and what I want you to pay attention to, especially are Jesus' emotions and his threats. Look for any emotions and threats. Because Jesus experience, uh, he experiences and exhibits um, uncommon levels of emotion in these events. Okay, so um, I'll read it, and we'll go from there. Mark 10, 13, people were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. So there's an important word. He was indignant. That means furious. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on them and blessed them. <clears throat> so 
Uh, let, let's let's look at that for a minute. First of all, I just I love like the softy nature of God here. Like this is the God who loves little children. He loves kids. You know, the Creator, the Sustainer of all things, uh, often seen as wrathful. Um, but here we see this tender-hearted moment where Jesus grabs the kids and hugs them and puts his hands on their heads and blesses them and he's furious when anyone would forget them or keep create distance between him and children like there's a softy kind of grandpa heart here from god that i love where jesus loves children now um contrast that when i I spend a lot of my time, me and my wife spend a lot of our time uh, at the ball fields watching my kids play ball, have since they were very little. Now sometimes my oldest son can drive himself to games, but um, a lot of times we're there. And it, it always, it, it never ceased to amaze me how often there would be these umps that would just like scowl and get all snarky with the kids and bossy and short. And, and I, would, I would sometimes even say and still do in my like passive aggressive dad of a ball player voice like loud enough to be heard but not directly at him. It's a shame these umps choose to ump these kids games when they obviously don't love kids or even like kids. Why do they pick kids games when they don't like kids? Like there's just this, there's a kind of person if we're not careful we can maybe all get there that just doesn't like kids and doesn't treat kids very well. But what we see from Jesus here that I love is Jesus genuinely likes kids. So that's the first thing I want you to see here is Jesus likes kids. Now let's take that another level. If you say you follow Jesus, if someone would ask if you're a Jesus follower, and you say, yeah, I'm a Jesus follower, Sometimes that means that we um, believe the right stuff. Like in our mind, where I, I'm a Jesus follower. I believe that he died for my sins and rose again. Or I believe the Bible and I believe he's God. And, but if we say we follow Jesus, and this is important, that means that we follow his way of life. We follow his example. We follow his teachings. And clearly the example of Jesus here is that he loves kids, he welcomes them, and he treats them well. Notice that word indignant there. Notice that he was so in love with kids and so valued children that he was furious. And this is a rare thing for Jesus. <clears throat> he was furious when someone tried to keep them from him. So if we say we follow Jesus, it means that we have to find ways to love kids and treat them well. And we cannot fall into the habit of mistreating or ignoring kids. You know, if you find yourself scowling at a little kid making too much noise in a nice restaurant and ruining your, you know, $20 steak experience, you're out of line. That's not how Jesus acted. We have to follow the example of of Jesus and, um, and, and find ways to love kids. So that's one of the things I guess I'd ask you is what are you doing to actively show love to children, to bless children, to show worth and encourage and love children? So that's the first thing. If we say we follow Jesus, we have to find ways to love and bless children. We cannot ignore children. We cannot... Um, uh, we cannot get short or, or, or um, you know, get off my lawn kind of an attitude toward children. And that's not following Jesus. Okay, look at the second passage here. Takes it a little bit further. Matthew 18. At the time, the disciples, at, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he called a little child to him and he placed the child among them. And he said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child, this is what I really want you to see. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If anyone causes one of these little ones 
uh, those who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. So, picture this being said. It says he, he called a little child to him. Jesus may be standing there with his arms on the shoulder of, shoulders of a kid facing out. And he, he's giving this example of here's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. If you welcome him, you welcome me. If you mistreat him, you got problems on judgment day. Okay? So this is, again, rare language for Jesus to throw these kinds of threats out here. But here's the, this was the game changer for me. This, I remember, it was about 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago when I had this huge, if you welcome them, you welcome me. How you treat children and how I treat children is how I treat Jesus. He takes it personal. God takes it personal how you treat children. You welcome them, you welcome him. If you hurt them in any way or allow them to be hurt, it's bad news for you. God takes it personal. This is why for me, I proudly say that we are all about kids and at Polaris, children are our number one value. And maybe people would say, well, Jesus needs to be your number one. Yeah, but you can't value Jesus if you don't value children because how you treat them are how you is how you treat Jesus. You love Jesus by loving children. And that's why as a church, like I never want to forget that. And I'll say that children's ministry at Polaris is the most important thing we do. Ministry for children, like our children's ministry, Polaris Kids, like Rise and Shine Preschool, like uh, Love Pure that's reaching children in Costa Rica. Kids are our number one priority because Jesus is our number one priority. And if we welcome children, we welcome Jesus. That's how we show love to Jesus, by showing love to kids. It's that important. So you, as you evaluate um, your own walk with Jesus, you have to ask the question, what am I doing for kids? And I would say find ways to directly bless kids, encourage kids. It can be just a smile. It can be a quick conversation, anything you can do to encourage kids. But then also support things that support kids. Support things that protect kids. Ask yourself, what am I doing to protect children? Um, could be Polaris Kids Ministry. Could be Polaris Student Ministry. Could be by, you know, big brother, big sister, volunteering in ways to mentor, to help, to tutor, to whatever. Anything we can do for kids directly uh, impacts our friendship with Jesus because how we treat them is how we treat Jesus. Okay, so um, happy Mother's Day if that is relevant to you. And I hope that you'll take those two passages of scripture and really do some hard work and ask yourself, what am I doing? And am I in any way hindering children or um, neglecting children? Because uh, this, is, this is a big deal in our walk with God. Let's pray. God, thank you for being, uh, for, for that kind of personality, um, loving kids. Thank you for that example. Uh, I, I, I just... I'm excited to serve the God who is indignant when he's separated from children and takes them in his arm and puts his hands on them and blesses them. Um, that's, that's the kind of God we need, uh, a loving God like that. And uh, what a great example for us to follow. So show us some ways, God, that we can, um, that we can implement this stuff and love you by loving children. Thank you for all the moms out there. Uh, pray that you would bless them, give them a great Mother's Day, and um, I pray that they would feel loved and appreciated, and that you would bless them as they show their children and grandchildren your love. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good week, everybody.